Hello, my name is Darren Thomas and I am the Director of Educational Research Techniques. And in this particular video, we're going to be taking a look at Lewis structures and how you can make these using LaTeX. So let's go ahead and see what we can learn. Now, uh, the purpose of Lewis structures, and I need to issue my disclaimer that I'm not a chemist or I'm not trained in chemistry. However, I am comfortable with LaTeX and this video is really for people who are in chemistry who are looking for shortcuts for how to, to design these things. But a Lewis structure deals with two things. One, it deals with uh, valence electrons on the outer shell of an of a atom, atom or a molecule and it also deal with the, the bonding between uh, different molecules or the same or different atoms if you will. And so often you're trying to illustrate these characteristics for various purposes um, within, you know, chemical research, I guess you can say. So what we have here is we're going to go line by line and kind of show you how this works out. So in the code right here, you can see in the, in the top upper left hand corner, I got my document class. And then the package that we're using here is Lewis, which makes complete sense. So the first thing we're going to look at is how to just make a Lewis dot diagram. So there's going to be no bonds. We're just going to put up a simple atom, if you will, or one particular element and see how this works. So I'm pasting this in here. Now the tricky thing is, let's see here. Can I make this bigger for you? Yeah, I can't. Here we go. Ah. The tricky thing here is that you got to make sure that you have eight brackets eight of these curly brackets, or actually nine actually. So the first one, after you put in your, your, your slash Lewis, the first one you put the name of whatever, whatever atom or whatever element you're using. Then you put your corresponding dots for each one. Now you're supposed to put eight of these because that's the, the maximum number of, of uh, electrons you can have in a, in, a, in a shell. Again, I'm not a chemist, but that's what, they, that's what I've been taught. And so you put a dot inside each one to represent that electron there. And they're going to make a circle around the F. You'll see that in a second. So if you look here, F is one. I got a dot here, that's two. Dot here, three. Dot here, four. Dot here, five. Dot here, six. Dot here, seven. Dot here, eight. And an empty one, nine. Now the reason the ninth one is empty is because fluorine, uh, I think that's what this is, <laughs> uh, fluorine only has seven electrons in his, in, in his valence outer shell. So you're supposed to leave that blank. Now I'm going to go ahead and run this and you're going to see something off to your right. All right. So let me make this bigger for you. There we go. That's our friend right there. And so you can see right there, it makes a nice little circle all the way around. And we had that one little gap right here because remember, we only have seven electrons. I'm, I'm trying to be you know, pure to the actual <laughs> uh, chemical properties, if you will. Now, we're going to need to go to the next step and we're going to take a look at how we can show a bond between uh, different atoms here. This is where it gets a little bit more complicated and you really gotta be on top of counting those, um, those uh, different little uh, curly braces here. Otherwise, you're going to have problems. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this. I'm going to paste it right here so you can see. All right. So here's our next one. You can see it right there. So basically, it's going to be H2O. We got uh, oxygen here. We got two hydrogen atoms. And we're setting this up so that we can, you know, show the bonds between the different uh, the different atoms, if you will. So, you know, they're, they're, uh, they're sharing electrons, if you will, or something along those lines. So let me go ahead and see if I can make this clear. So you know here that we start with the element, so that's gonna be O. Then I put a dot here. So remember, we gotta add up to nine. The first curly brace is gonna be the name of the element, you know, the element. Then after that, we gotta have eight more for the eight electrons that are supposed to be in the outer shell. But what's unique here, and I'll explain this in a second, is that one of those spaces is taken up with this uh, hydrogen that's connecting to the oxygen. So we got our dot here, that's one. Another curly brace here, it's empty because we're, we're, sh we're sharing them now, sharing the electrons. So that's two. Then inside this one, this is taking up like that third electron space. All right, this whole thing. Now, 
because of this, I still, inside this inner inner uh, curly brace, I have to put my eight empty spots here um, because remember, hydrogen only has one electron and it's now being shared with oxygen, so they're all empty. So all these empty spots are for hydrogen, but they're empty because I just told you hydrogen has one electron, they're all gone now. So this all applies towards hydrogen. And it's very easy to get confused here because this is taking up one space for the oxygen one, but you gotta have these eight spaces inside to, to uh, take into account hydrogen. So I'm still going here, and then I'm still going. This is all, and see, the way you can tell is, if you can tell when I go past the curly brace, it tells me when I'm almost done, okay? So I got the backslash. This backslash is gonna represent the actual connection between oxygen and hydrogen. That's what it's going to do here. All right, and so now I'm finally done with that. And then we get here, but I'm still not done. Then I have to repeat this for the second hydrogen. So this is almost done. Now right here, this is eight, seven, six, five. So this is taking up the fourth space right here on the oxygen one right here. This stuff right here, four, this is three, and this guy is taking up like uh, two, uh, three or two or something. I get confused. But the secret to keeping track of the of how many electrons you've used is by when you move past a curly brace, the 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 one to the left highlights. Okay, so every time I do that, it highlights, and that's how I'm able to keep track. So one, two, this is three right here. Uh, this is four, five. Five, six, seven, eight, like so. So eight, seven, six, five, this is four. That's how it kind of works out. It gets really confusing. And so now, as, as I, much as I've tried to make this clear, we need to just run this and see what we can learn. All right, move on down here. Zoom out a little bit. And you can see that for yourself right there. So we know that in theory it works. So you can clearly see that we have the four electrons on the outside. That's these guys right here, one, two, three, and four. And then we have this stuff right here, these hydrogens, okay? So four, five, six, but remember, each of these bonds here represents like two electrons. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six right here, seven, eight right here, and we're done. So one, two, three, four, this is blank, okay? Notice how this one over here is blank also, all right? And then for the hydrogens, they're all blank. So hydrogen has all empty blanks right here because they're sharing their one electron with oxygen. The same thing with this hydrogen right here. Now notice the first time we use the backslash, all right? And then the second time we use the forward slash. That way one points this way and the other one points the opposite direction. That's the reason behind that. So again, you really gotta you know, take your time to try to do this, but this does work. Now. The last one, we're just going to show you a different way that you can shape these. Is This is a double bond, actually. Let's see here. Okay, so this is an example of a double bond. And this is, of course, oxygen and uh, carbon this time, I believe. So you can see here, we got oxygen so then we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Then we got eight right here, okay? And then we got a little space here. You have to play with this. Then you have just an equal sign, and you put that slash there so that it doesn't confuse LaTeX. Then we got the C right here, and then we move on, of course, and we have the uh, a little bit of more space, and then we have another Lewis structure with the oxygens as shown. So let me go ahead and run this for you. Let's see here, oh, here it goes. And right there. Okay, let me make it a little bit smaller for you. There we go. And so you can see right there, we got our four electrons on the outside, four. This bomb makes five, six, seven, eight. Then we got the C, then we got one, two, three, four, and then four more, that makes eight. So we got our nice little uh, double bond here. And all we did for the double bond was use an equal sign. And you can see we put the C in the middle. Uh, that's how it works out here. This is a little bit uh, clearer to do, but I'm not going to deal with the details of, of how to determine what goes in the middle and everything. That's not my expertise. 
what I'm trying to share with you here is how to create these if you know chemistry is your field. So let me see if I can go back and summarize what I've talked about and conclude this video. So in this video, we talked about how to make Lewis structures uh, using LaTeX. And the purpose of a Lewis structure is to try to show you uh, how many electrons, how many valence electrons a particular atom may have. And so the first example here at the top is just a simple fluorine or whatever you call it. Um, and so you can see here that each of these, the first curly brace represents the um, atom itself. And then each of these curly braces represents one of the electrons. They're a dot. And so they go around in a circle nice and neatly around it. In the second example right here, starting in line six through line seven, we looked at here how to make an actual, uh, show an actual covalent bond, if you will. So in this example right here, you can see we have the slashes that represents it's connecting with the oxygen and then the, the remaining uh, electrons, unpaired electrons are free underneath the oxygen right here. This is really complicated. You have to count the number of curly braces that you're using and then within one of the curly braces, you have to put the actual element that you're using. And that is like a, um, it's like a curly brace within a curly brace and it's very easy to get lost. So remember I told you to make sure you count how many you use as you go along and keep use the, the left and right arrow to figure out where you're at with an actual code, if you will. And so down here at the bottom of lines uh, nine through 11, we have a, a, an example of a double bond. And so with the double bond, the coding is a little bit simpler, <clears throat> at least in my example, where I just have a simple oxygen here, and then I have a simple oxygen at the bottom, and then I put the, uh, the, the center one in the middle like so, so the carbon. The carbon has no electrons that are free, they're all taken up in the bond, if you will. And notice something also that over here, I have one, two, three, then all blanks for the oxygen, and then I, ha I have three blanks and then I have the remaining oxygens. That's how you get the uh, electrons on the appropriate side. I mean, I guess it's not wrong to put them right here, but it's clear when they're on the outside like this whenever possible. So I hope that this video made sense and that if this is something you need for your studies that you have now are ready to, you know, make Lewis diagrams or structure, excuse me. So my name is Darren Thomas. I am the Director of Educational Research Techniques. Thank you so much for watching and take care.